how is it going everyone back today with another video so i'm recording this the day after i stayed up all night to watch the ufc so i do apologize if i look like i've just dug myself up uh, i effectively have to be honest um i thought i would come back today with a slightly different vid i was originally planning on doing a few kind of vinyl update sort of uh videos just for ease of uh, kind of creating them and prepping them uh, for my sake however i thought if i don't get this done and kind of thought about and finalized i might never get it done so i thought let's get this one out of the way this is going to be my blackened death metal starter pack um so i started this series off a little while ago uh, i've done things like finnish death metal swedish death metal extreme metal uh, i've done a handful of them so far and i will continue with them uh, as we kind of keep going with this channel um, because i've got a few other ideas for this but this one was requested uh, a little while back i can't remember who requested it but i thought great idea however black and death metal is very much not a starter kind of subgenre of extreme metal it is one of the most extreme if not inarguably the most extreme depending on whether or not you're going into the kind of war metal territories um so it's taken me a little while to think of all these i feel like i've done a decent job here um of kind of thinking of stuff that m probably would get somebody into this sort of music um not something that's going to kind of scare people away if that makes sense i'm sure there are a couple in here but uh, i've kind of gone with i'm assuming these people whoever may be using these starter packs will probably be kind of aware of black metal and death metal so i used to the kind of extreme side of things in general um but yeah we'll just see how this goes i picked uh, approximately 10 albums your boy can't count over here so uh apologies if i've kind of uh fucked that up completely but uh yeah i'll go into what's going on in the background in a moment because i've actually included the album that is on in the background spoiler alert if you can hear that and can decipher what it is um but yeah i'm just gonna get into this shit with the first pick so i've gone with a short demo here first of all um and it's one that i honestly couldn't leave out it's not one of the most kind of ferocious sounding records you will ever hear but it definitely definitely lies on the kind of blackened death metal spectrum this is morbid apologies about the glare by the way there's not a lot i could do about that um this is morbid with their demo entitled december moon um so if you're not familiar with morbid this is a swedish black and death metal band um with a dead uh famous for his work in mayhem on vocals um we've also got uh, lg petrov on drums on this one um so this one has that kind of buzz sawing guitar tone it's very reminiscent of the stockholm sound of death metal however with dead's kind of whispered creepy dark kind of blackened vocal approach there is no denying that this one really kind of falls on the blackened side of things we've got this really creepy almost don't know if it's like a nursery rhyme sort of style kind of bit of vocals on the final track uh, i believe it's disgusting similar um yeah it's just really creepy it's really it's got that graveyard atmosphere uh that kind of dead's work is renowned for being like uh is stuff with like mayhem on live in leipzig for example is a very eerie sort of recording this one although it's pretty well produced it will kind of get you closer to the kind of wickedness that darkness and that evil that you need in this subgenre um with enough of both kind of um subgenres to call it blackened death metal um so yeah december moon brilliant brilliant album in fact an absolute classic and an essential if you ask me it's taken me a long time to get this thing into my collection um but yeah i managed to get the one of the recent bootlegs of that one i'm not going to go into the aesthetics of any of these releases um just because otherwise this will go on for about 20 minutes longer than it needs to next up i've gone with the first kind of more bestial um release uh this one out of finland is the mighty arch goat 
with their fourth full-length album entitled The Luciferian Crown. So I do own all of Archgold's uh, full-length albums, but I've gone with this one because I feel like it's probably the most accessible, aside from perhaps uh, Worship the Eternal Darkness, the most recent full-length album. This one, it's got some real ferocity to it. It's got that war metal sound, the really low kind of drubbing caveman sort of drum work, the gurgly grunts from a uh, Lord Angel Slayer. Um, but it's also got those really catchy kind of groove laden um, riffs where they slow down a bit, they, they go mid paced kind of out of nowhere um, with some real kind of head nodding catchy ass sort of um, sort of little passages I suppose you could call them um, where they don't mind throwing in a little solo here and there um, quite melodic and quite um, sort of yeah accessible I suppose if you're getting into black and death metal this is the sort of uh, album that you're going to be wanting to suss out especially if you're wanting to go into that more bestial side of black and death metal I love this thing man it's absolutely brilliant uh, tracks like Jesus Christ Father of Lies and Jezebel's Black Mass Orgy um, Messiah of Pigs which I think was the single off this one um, yeah those tracks are absolutely where it's at on here Fantastic stuff. Next up, I've gone with something with a sort of similar approach to Morbid in that they mix the Stockholm sort of buzzsawing death metal sound with the darker kind of blackened atmosphere. This is Necrophobic out of Sweden with their debut full-length album from 1993 entitled The Nocturnal Silence. Um, so yeah, as I said, this one, if you like um, Morbid's work, you'll probably dig this one as well. Very similar, very well written, very mel uh, melodic, excuse me. Um, melodic in a similar sort of way to bands like Dissection, for example, who you might be seeing shortly. Spoiler alert. Um, but... If you think of a band like Dismember, for example, they've got the kind of sawing kind of HM2 stuff going on uh, in the guitar tone and everything, quite groovy. Um, but then we've got those melodic sort of passages to create atmosphere, to create that kind of, again, that eerie, creepy atmosphere, uh, sorry, aura. Like, I don't know, just feels a bit more infernal and a little bit more kind of authentic, if you ask me. Um, that's exactly what this has got. We've got high pi higher pitched sort of uh, vocals going on as opposed to the sort of more hardcore sounding uh, sort of yelled screams that a lot of those bands like Dismember were using uh, in the early 90s. This is absolutely stellar. The songwriting is comparable to that of a Carnage or an Entombed in that very, very memorable guitar tones utilized perfectly, but it's not over sort of um it's not pushed too far to the front it's not kind of all that it's relying on to be memorable um yeah it's just absolutely fantastic man this is my favorite necrophobic work however you could probably start anywhere in the discography still going strong to this day um so yeah go and check that out that's the nocturnal silence by necrophobic just take a swig of pepsi quickly the superior cola, if you ask me. Probably lost about 50% of my um, subscribers there by saying that. Um, next up, I've gone with a more modern album and I don't suppose anybody will be surprised to see this in here. Uh, I don't have the vinyl of this one. Um, but this one is Behemoth from Poland with their fuck knows how many albums in this was uh, one of their later albums entitled the satanist this came out in 2014 and this was their full transition and full embrace of the black and death metal style um i can't remember when that really started they had demigod before this um but yeah regardless they like ditched the full-on black metal approach and added a ton of death metal uh cleaned things up quite a bit and this was the ultimate result because I think this was the absolute pinnacle of their black and uh, death metal sound. I hated the album after and the one after that. I mean, it was better, but still 
very forgettable. The songwriting here, the lyricism here, um, is all quite um, sort of approachable. Um, tracks like um, Blow Your Trumpets, Gabrielle, the first track on here, O oh Father, O oh Satan, O oh Son, the final track on here. The lyrics are almost poetic. They've got that satanic edge, but the music, it's quite, again, there's quite a lot of groove. There's quite a lot of um, sort of traditional heavy metal um, sort of stylistic leanings to the riffing. To your ears, it won't sound like that, but in the way that the riffs are played, um, I can really, really hear that. Uh, you can hear Nergal's kind of um, vocals and enunciation very clearly. You can hear everything he's saying. So it's quite approachable in that sense. Pretty polished in terms of production as well. Uh, but it still feels evil. It still has that infernal sort of blasphemous um, satanic edge that black and death metal really, really needs. I think this is a great album, man. Um, you either love this one or hate it. Uh, there's not really any in between. But um, I think this is brilliant, and I think it's a great album to kind of push you towards the black and death metal um, sort of side of things. Uh, so that was the fourth pick. Um, oh, I've got written here. God, I'm more organised than I thought. It, that was their tenth album, apparently. So, uh, yeah. Next up, from 1987, you probably knew this was coming. Um, this one... Out of Brazil, of course, it had to be here, is Sarcophago with their debut full-length album entitled INRI. This is apocalyptic, abrasive, sort of um, prototype war metal, if you want to call it that. You'll listen to this and absolutely know what I mean. It's got those kind of, you know, those modulated vocals where it makes everything super low, um, and just makes it sound completely satanic. It sounds like Satan himself is speaking. It's got those. It's got blast beats for days. It's got that chunky, like, caveman sound where the drumming almost sounds sloppy in its um, sort of delivery. However, it's not at all. It's just because of the sound. It sounds crushing. Sounds like the drum skins aren't even going to survive this goddamn thing. Um, songwriting is absolutely outstanding. Satanic lust, nightmare... Um, absolutely fantastic, Last Slaughter, Christ's Death. We've got so many killer tracks on here that are so well written and so memorable despite how abrasive this thing is. Unbelievable that this came out in 1987 uh, given just how extreme it sounds. It still holds up to this day. And what a gateway into war metal. Can't really ask for anything else. Imagine being around in 1987 hearing this and craving more in this vein. You didn't have too much around that sort of time in this vein. So, uh, yeah, I imagine this was an absolute kick in the fucking nuts. Um, yeah, brilliant stuff. Sarcophago, INRI. Iconic, influential, and just brilliant, man. Next up, from Sweden yet again. Bit of a trend going on here, but uh, you'll see why. This is actually what is on in the background on CD. I show this one all the time, but this is grotesque within the embrace of evil. So this is a compilation um, of their first three demos. I don't believe they did anything else, to be honest. Uh, I think they split up. Um, this has Thomas Lindbergh out of At The Gates in it, so obviously he went off to do his own thing. But this one... It's like a really, really harsh, really evil, infernal sounding black and death metal assault. This one, as opposed to like the other Swedish records that I've shown so far, Necrophobic and Morbid, has more of a blackened sort of approach, if you ask me. It's not quite as chunky. It definitely doesn't have that um, kind of HM2 guitar tone or anything. It is more on the sort of higher register of things. Thomas's um, vocal approach is really harsh and um, kind of mid to high register and um, very raspy and it sounds like the fucking flesh is coming off his throat as he's screeching into the mic uh, this one came out in 1996 i think originally um, and this is absolutely brilliant again really really well written it's got that guitar tone that sounds like there's loads of like tremolo picking going on it isn't quite that sort of uh, blackened but it definitely has that guitar tone 
um, very well written, pretty melodic still, but um, yeah, there is nothing kind of uh, friendly about this goddamn thing. It just sounds venomous, caustic, and evil. Absolutely stellar, grotesque. Can't get enough of that one. That's on constant, constant rotation over here still. Go and give that one a whirl. Next up, so I've gone with one of the most extreme albums on here. I felt like I couldn't leave off the war metal sound, um, despite it not being like a starter sort of style. Um, but this is a black and death metal starter pack. It's all relative. So what I've done here is added this one. I was very tempted to put um, The Oath of Black Blood in here by Beherit. However... I don't care which way you look at it, that thing is not a starter album, even for black and death metal. Um, that thing is just insane. Blasphemy's Fallen Angel of Doom, however, from 1990, their debut album. Um, this is a little bit more accessible in that the production is quite a lot less sort of grainy than the um, Beherit stuff or the early Beherit stuff. This one, it sounds like a decipherable full-length album that's being produced, um, but without losing any of that war metal sort of just aggression. This thing sounds like it just wants to beat you into a pool of your own blood and not stop stomping on your head until it's made, just made a big pile of mush on the pavement. Um, we've got those kind of... Um, sort of signature war metal grunts and gurgles and just the like low sort of more death metal style um vocals we've got blast beats again that sound like that caveman sound it almost sounds like it was recorded in a garage with the drum sound which i love um but it yeah it does sound like a chimpanzee or a neanderthal or something has been given two clubs and has been told to play the goddamn drums with them in a room next door um riff wise you need to get your ear in because it's it's super high velocity it's super in your face and it rarely lets up but we do have those similar to arch goat not quite as groovy and accessible but we've got those mid-paced more sluggish sections that uh, sort of just want to bring you into the concrete uh really 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 good super memorable super super infernal this thing sounds just it sounds like you're being dragged into a pit of hell um, and yeah, I can't get enough of this thing, man. Um, absolutely fantastic. Fallen Angel of Doom by Blasphemy. I've just ordered uh, Blood Upon the Altar as well, the demo, um, which I'm looking forward to receiving. But uh, yeah, Fallen, Fallen Angel of Doom is a must. Next up, I've gone with quite a modern one. I believe this one came out in 2009. I didn't actually write that down, but uh, yeah, hopefully I got that right. This is the mighty titan blood out of spain with their debut full-length album entitled seven chalices um so yeah if you can't tell by the insane kind of hydra looking album cover with loads of like detail and stuff this is kind of war metal but it's modern war metal i would say it's got that kind of chunky guitar tone um but it's got a lot of like patience atmosphere even melody in a lot of the guitar um, so, uh, guitar solos and lead work. But the lead work, it is quite dissonant. It's like that melody so kind of dissonant that it's almost beautiful and melodic. Um, but it's, it's seething. It's hateful. It's fast. It's aggressive. We start off the album with like a really kind of, um, yeah, like meandering sort of tension building sort of atmospheric piece. Um, but then that quickly descends into utter chaos, absolute Armageddon. This is just pure apocalypse in music. Um, I absolutely love this thing, man. It's so, so good. Uh, again, gets you in the war metal sound in a slightly more accessible fashion to uh, blasphemy. The word accessible shouldn't be used anywhere for war metal, if you ask me. However, if we're going to be all relative, um, yeah, this is a fantastic gateway record in uh, their other albums are uh, Death, um, what's the other one called? The Baneful Choir, maybe, I want to say. Um, all great stuff, but uh, this one is my absolute favourite 
fantastic stuff. Just sheer, sheer hatred. Seven Chalices by Titan Blood. Next up, we've only got two left. I've rattled through these, although I say that the time has just gone quickly. Um, I've got an album out of the USA from 1996, I believe. Uh, this could not be left out here. This is Angel Corpse with their debut full-length album entitled Hammer of Gods. This is Drusifer, sort of um, described this as being proto-war metal as well, and I can totally see that. It's got black metal, it's got thrash metal, and it's got death metal. It's kind of like death thrash with a little bit of black metal, that's kind of what it sounds like to me, but it really has that ferocity. The blast beats are insane. Pete Helmkamp's vocals are just ferocious. The songwriting is absolutely stellar. Envenomed being my favorite track on here. Absolutely fantastic, super memorable, super catchy. They don't sacrifice uh, songwriting for just sheer madness. They really, really do pay attention to their songwriting, or they did, I should say. These guys aren't around anymore. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely brilliant, man. If you like well-written sort of death thrash with that extra added bit of harshness, then please go and check that out. It's super visceral, super well-written. Fucking brilliant. Angel Corpse, Hammer of Gods. And finally... I've gone with a band that I did actually mention earlier on. Yet another sort of HM2 sort of Swedish death metal, black metal, black and death metal album. Uh, this is really melodic. This is Dissection with the Somber Lane, of course. 1993. Debut full-length album. This is... I mean, what is there to say? It's what kicked off this style. Uh, if you like bands like Sacramentum, if you like bands like Thulcandra... Any of those kind of bands that are around uh, now that kind of use this style, um, then yeah, you'll probably already know this. Outstandingly well written, very melodic, pays a lot of attention to lead sort of melodies. Um, it's pretty, it's really mature considering how young the guys were when they wrote this goddamn thing. And uh, yeah, it's just got that super unique sound. Even though there are a bunch of kind of clone bands or like worship bands for this uh, sort of album, you could say, um, you just know this is dissection as soon as you throw it on or as soon as you hear it. It's just got that charm that many bands have not managed to capture in a sit in the same way. Um, this again, it's more on the pretty side, so this you're not going to get straight into blasphemy from this album, but there is a bit of a spectrum of black and death metal. Um, and I wanted to kind of cover all bases here. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the best albums of all time, if you ask me. The Sombolane by Dissection is frankly close to untouchable in the black and death metal realm. I consider their sophomore to be more on the black metal side. But um, yeah, Dissection definitely left us with two of the greatest albums in the blackened subgenre, subspace, whatever you want to call it. And that concludes that. Do let me know what you think. Do let me know if you think I've missed any off that would be good for a starter pack. I mean, as I say, I could have uh, included like, um, well, a couple of Beherit's albums really. But uh, I was going to originally put the Oath of Black Blood in there. Uh, Drawing Down the Moon nearly made it in. Uh, but I feel like that one's a bit weird as well. So not quite a starter album. Not quite re uh, sort of... Um, it doesn't quite represent black and death metal as a whole in any facet, so I thought better to uh, keep that one in. Um, narrowing it down to 10 is, of course, difficult. I had a bunch uh, in mind otherwise. We've got bands like Revenge, Conqueror, um, that could have been uh, put in here, uh, Bestial Warlust. The, I mean, the possibilities are endless, but those bands are super extreme at the same time, so it, it's quite hard to fucking make these goddamn things. But yeah. Anyway, I'll stop me rambling. Let me know what you think. Hopefully, if you're not into black and death metal yet, that got you somewhat into it at the very, very least with some of those Swedish uh, sounding bands. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope your weekend's gone well. Enjoy your work week. And I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>